So we're holding in the Kinyanim by Kenya number eight, the Kinyan of Bisimcha. The Kinyan of Bisimcha. And we discussed last time on a concept of learning Bisimcha, how it enhances someone's quality of learning and someone's quantity of learning. The approach you take affects your demeanor, and not only demeanor, but your the essence of your actual learning process enhances it. There's a fascinating piece by the Sefer Ayosha. The Sefer Ayosha was written by Rabbi Tam. It's a Musr Sefer Batson written by Rabbi Tam. And Rabbi Tam points out that when any some whenever somebody starts to do something, it's a concept that we're very familiar with. And whenever somebody starts to do an action, they are very excited for that new experience. Koilas is all the beginning of, of starting things always leads or gives a person a certain gishmak, a certain hana. They're excited and that excitement leads to a joy. And that's true about all beginnings. You start a new mesechta, it's awesome. You start a new zman, it's gonna be perfect, it's gonna be amazing. You start a new event, it's great, I'm ready to go. As time draws on, as things progress, the excitement from the beginning, that initial gishmak, that initial feeling begins to dwindle and wane, and wane, I'm sorry. And therefore, one doesn't feel the same approach and the same gishmak that they originally, they originally felt. Think about, imagine a half deal, a person goes on a diet. A person decides to work out and become, get in shape. The first day, two, three, four, is usually very good, very exciting. That, that feeling after a very hard workout, that first time you come back and you're like, oh, I'm just completely wiped out and completely drained, but that makes me so invigorated, that makes me feel, feel so refreshed and so good. The second day, you're excited to go again, whether it's a day later, two days later, you're excited for the second time, the third time. But usually after three, four times, you begin to feel like it's a drag. It's, I got to do it because I, I committed myself to it. I put myself in a place of obligation, but I don't really want to. I'm not really interested in making my way to the gym, going on that 10 mile or two mile run again. It's the same thing over again. And I feel more about the again than I do, than I'm focused on the goal at the end. Points out Rabbeinu Tam, we have to somehow capture we have to somehow focus and take with us that original gishmak, that original excitement, and use it to enhance our experience even when that excitement dwindles. In other words, in other words, think about the original excitement of having a virtual yeshiva on Zoom. It's very new, it's very mechodesh, you didn't have any social interaction or social experience for a few days or weeks. And now I have the opportunity to reconnect. I have the opportunity to readjust. I have the opportunity to discuss things with my friends, with my rebate, to see everyone. But after a day or two or three and looking at a computer screen for hours on end, it gets old, it, it drags on, it becomes again and again and again with no end in sight. And Rabbeinu Tam says that's specifically the time that a person has to focus, has to recognize and remember the geschmack and the excitement of the action the first time. To relive that original enjoyment that we had. Now it's very hard. It's almost impossible to feel like I'm doing it for the first time again. You, you did it the first time. The first time was the first time. Right? I remember I remember when the Boston Red Sox broke their World Series curse and they won the World Series and then a few years later they won it a second time. 
And one of the players on the team, I'm forgetting who off the top of my head, was asked, what was the more exciting, what was the more gishmak, what was the more invigorating experience? And the person said, obviously, the first time's the first. You can't never compare it to the first. And it's true. I remember the first time I did countless things. The first time is just so unbelievable, overwhelming. However, however, each individual experience has that potential, has the greatest capability of having the gishmak and the excitement of the first. Every time we approach a Gemara, every time we approach a, learn, a, a Mishnayis, every time we approach a Chavrusa Shach, we have that potential to tap into the excitement as if we're doing it again for the first time. Says Rabbi Nutam, it's specifically for this reason that when somebody's feeling what we quote unquote call the Yemei Hasinna, the days where I'm not excited to make it to the base of Medrash, where I'm not excited to have that Chavuz, where I'm not excited to do that Chumash Rashi again, another Aliyah, but I force myself through now, Avad and Avad, the, the Amkos, the clarity might not be as good as it was yesterday. The clarity, the, the, the gishmak might not be the same, and I don't push myself as hard as I did. But nonetheless, says Rabbi Nutam, if you force yourself to do it, if you engage despite your misgivings and your feelings that you're not excited for it, guess what? You can change that whole session from being moments of doubt, from being a time of despair, being a time of sadness, to being excited. You never know what's going to spark that your interest. You never know what's going to spark your joy. You never know what's going to cause that gishmak to come back. Think about it for a moment. When you're having a rough day, a person's having a rough game. Let's a person's playing a game, whatever game it may be, whether it's a board game, a card game, a sport, it doesn't matter. So you're having a rough day, you're having a rough day, right? You're playing against a friend of yours and you lose two, three, four times in a row. And all of a sudden you get it on a roll. You're playing one-on-one -on -one and you start to hit threes. You hit three threes in a row. Imagine all of a sudden, despite the fact that I lost the previous three games, that moment, those three threes, that geschmack, now I'm on fire. Now I feel like I'm ready to go. Now I feel like I can take over, I can take over the world. All it takes is a moment. All it takes is a spark. All it takes is that little inspiration. I can't tell you how many times I've seen it with my own eyes where guys are sitting down at a Bakiya Seder and it's very difficult. They're up to a hard Gemara, whether it's a Gemara in Hazab in the fourth bag of Mitzia, that's a backbreaker, or a Gemara in Baba Basra. And they're having a difficult time figuring out the words of the Rajbab. You don't know how many times, and it's happened over and over again. And I can't even begin to count how many times that a moment, all of a sudden, they can figure out one sentence in the entire Ahmed, and your entire Seder is turned over on its head. That one moment of clarity, that one instance of gratif gratification can literally turn the whole experience from being negative to positive. The Chaim Velazhener, there's a famous, Mamash, a famous piece from the Rav Chaim Velazhener in his explanation for Yehovah's Ruach Chaim at the beginning of Herak Beis. He quotes the Gemara Psachim, the Oilam Yasig, Adam Batayro, the Mitzvahs, Af Shaloy Lishma, Shemitay Shaloy Lishma, Yahweh Lishma. The Gemara tells us that a person should always involve himself in Tayyar Mitzvahs, even if it's Shaloy Lishma, even if he's doing it for the wrong reasons, as long as it's not negative reasons. He's doing it for the wrong reasons, not positive, but it's not negative. Why? Because Mitay Shaloy Lishma, Yahweh Lishma, because from that Lishma, you will eventually achieve, you will reach the levels of Lishma. 
Chaim asks the obvious question. You should really, that's what you should start your day with? You should start your day saying, I'm going to go and sit down to learn so everyone will bow down to me, so everyone's going to stand up for me when I walk in the room? Does that really make sense? Says the Ruach Chaim, no, the Pshat is as follows. Shiyil the Oilam. Always learn, always do the mitzvah. Don't ever miss the learning. Don't give up the chavrusa. Don't give up the seder. Don't give up the opportunity to learn. And if you think, oh my gosh, I'm learning for the wrong reasons. Oh my gosh, I feel, ich, this isn't the right reason, the right approach to learning. Don't give up the learning because because despite the fact that you have the wrong approach, despite the fact that you're not feeling the right way when you start to learn, in that chavrusa itself, in that learning session alone, there's a tremendous potential of mitoich shaloi lishma yavoi lishma. So don't ever give up just because you're not in the mood for it. How many times do we think to ourselves, if I can't be perfect, if I can't do the mitzvah in the optimal way, I might as well not do it at all. If I'm not going to get 100, I might as well just not take the test. If I'm not going to finish the mesechta, so I might as well not start. It's a phrase we hear constantly and frequently. Rabbi Frant, in one of his says, a beautiful drushes at the Siyam Hashas, if I'm not mistaken, two Siyam Hashas ago, he said, perfection is our ultimate enemy. Perfection is the enemy of good. Somebody sits down, he was a relating to Daf Yemi, and they think, I can't do a Daf Yemi every single day to do a Daf a day. That's ludicrous. That's absurd. Maybe I'll do it for a month. Maybe I'll do it for two. But, but I, for seven years to do Daf a day, that's crazy. And my friend said, if you think you have to be perfect, you'll never begin. Just strive to be good. HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't want us to be malachim. He wanted us to be B'nai Adam and to achieve despite our deficiencies, to, to achieve despite our problems. Because perfection is the ultimate enemy of good. That's the aside of Rabbi Chaim Velashen. Don't think just because I can't be perfect today. I'm having a rough time. Seder is not so gishmak. It's not so exciting. Another day on Zoom. Another day with no social interaction, another day away from the basement, it's not going to be perfect. Don't think, therefore, I should just give up because you never know what's going to spark that inspiration. You never know what's going to be that moment of joy. And even if you don't feel it today, it might come back tomorrow. One way, Matisio Solomon points out, from Gedoyle Mimenu. One way to lead to excitement and joy in learning is to look back at our accomplishments. Many times, many times, we think it was a rough day, I didn't get it clear, the Shatavatai is not 100%. It was a rough day, I, I couldn't figure out what the Gemara's Kasha was. It was a rough day. I don't know what Tesis is saying. Rashi Bichlal was out to lunch today, or I was out to lunch today. I couldn't figure out Rashi. I was making my lunch today, so I couldn't figure out Rashi. Many things are going through our heads. So we think it's a, says Ramatisio, look at what you did. Because you never know. Look back. One daf, two daf, three daf. Pick up the bottom of your Gemara and see, oh my gosh, I might not have clarity, but guess what? I've learned through 85 blocks or 75 blocks or three daf. Look at what we've accomplished. 
every piece of information of Torah adds on to that which is before it. Every piece is another coin in the treasure chest. And we don't think, we look at the coin and we say it's not shiny. But if you look at the treasure chest, it's full of coins. So don't focus on the lack of shine. If you're feeling down and you're feeling out of it because you didn't have such a shiny Seder, it's Kedai to look at the treasure chest. Look at that Oitzar that's full of Dapim of Gemara, of Teisvusim that you learned, of Mefarshim, of Mishnaburas, of Chomish, Rashi. Look at that treasure chest that's full. Not every coin is going to be crystal clear. It's not going to be sparkling. But guess what? Many coins, despite the fact that they're not shining, they add up to a lot, a lot, a lot of money. That, says Rabbi Tzio, is one way that when we're not feeling the greatest in our learning, to look back and feel that kishmak, to take that original excitement and invigorate our day and to capture that simcha that we might be lacking today. Everyone should have a lot of atzlacha. We should also feel that simcha, yoyim of